We have tracked down the busiest man in Cleveland sports media, TV, everywhere. Actually, he made time for us. Listen to today's Locked On Guardians as we talk to Guardians dugout reporter Andre Knott. Good evening. Uh, thanks for having me. You are gentlemen. Locked On it. Guardians. For, uh, Your daily podcast on the Cleveland Guardians. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. I want to take a moment and say thank you for making Lockdown Guardians your first listen today and every day wherever you get podcasts. Uh, and, of course, I want to also join in and thanking Andre for joining us. We know how busy is it he is, and we appreciate his time uh, joining us. I'm Jeff. That's Justin. And as you said, we have a very special guest. So uh, we're not going to, uh, to beat around the bush with anything else. We're just going to dive right in. Hey, Andre, thanks for joining us. You can hear Andre at uh, everywhere. Uh, WKNR, A to Z podcast, the Guardians games. I think you're still with Fox 8 as well. Yeah, I you're think You're just so. about everywhere. I appreciate <laughs> it. I, um, I'm overly blessed in what I'm able to do and where I'm able to be. Um, so thank you. Take your, Let's talk baseball. Right? Here, I'm going to ask you guys a question. <laughs> I'm going I'm to start right. this the other way. Um, what should fans – that don't understand what it's like to have the clocks on games day after day. What are they supposed to expect? Because I say this because we've done two games now, right? In the last two days, players really haven't, that I've heard, haven't really complained much. I think the first game everyone liked it because it was under two and a half hours. Today's game was a bad game with a lot of runs scored. And it still was, I, I don't even know what the time is. And I can check as we speak. But it was probably close to three hours or over three hours. Bad baseball is still bad baseball. Good baseball is good <laughs> baseball. Even if it's, but, you know, and I guess that's what I'm saying. Like for all the people that are complaining and having the time to, to watch, yeah. Like games. If, a t- if one team gives up 13, 14 runs, it's still bad baseball, even if it's, if it's under three hours. I think we'll we'll see less bad baseball with uh, I don't know bad baseball that lasts less than three hours is still better than baseball that lasts over three hours right and today's game by the way was two hours and forty nine minutes so it was it was super close but it was under three hours so uh, mm-hmm. I don't know Jeff I I think that uh, people will enjoy having the, the pitch clock honestly I think by like May or June no one's going to even notice the difference it's just going to be smooth once the players get into it yeah and I think in some ways it's like maybe their hidden advantage just because how young the team is like how many of these guys uh, already have had experience. I remember being in double a gosh, probably like three, four years ago when like when, uh, quite a few of these guys were down there and they were already experiencing it. So maybe that's the, the secret advantage. The secret uh, that they'll have is it won't be uh, as big of a hiccup, but it does seem to be the big talk from this first weekend so far. I think you make a good point, though. I think because, yeah. Do you, do you think that's going to be an advantage for them? I do. I do. I think there's so many guys that are on the roster that have played with some sort of clock. Maybe even if it's not exactly what they have right now. Um, I do that. I think that's really in all these changes that MLB have made over the last year, year and a half. It's it, there's always a funny story though to it um, because I do think it helps this current team because of the age. But I'll never forget when they first started to implement the clock in the minors for guys uh, for hitters. And they were like, you know, finding guys and everything else. And this is probably five, six years ago. And Tyler Naquin never got, never, never did anything, you know, never got fined, never got in trouble in Columbus. He got to Cleveland and by his third at bat, he got fined for stepping out of the box. So he totally did it in the minors. And as soon as he got to the big leagues, it was like right up. Like, forgot all about it. <laughs> all right. So some guys will probably have to adjust. There was somebody. I was watching that was Saturday or today. I was watching the game and somebody stepped out to do something. And I was like, is he, is he allowed to do that? Like, is that legal? Is he, can he do that? So it's, definitely, I mean, I'm definitely thinking about it. Yeah. I think, I think part of that is for all of us, right? Like you see anything that's like abnormal now and you're instantly like, does the clock stop? Does the clock, you know, is that a infraction? I think I'm glad we're having a long, uh, a long spring training. I'm glad it's not last year where it was like three weeks and you were playing regular season games. Yeah. You know what, Andre? My partner here, Jeff, hates spring training baseball. You, I you say are I spending 
So you no, you said you hated it. I'm so telling my, you, you, said you my hated view it. is I hate Here the over I hate the overreaction to spring training baseball. It has made me not enjoy spring training baseball because I turn on Twitter for well, yeah, my clink it's TV. I flick on Twitter. Twitter. That's for the that's the first a, problem. A but minute. I love you and I understand. I, <laughs> no, I, I, I get, but it's like you know Zach Plesac. I understand he had his struggles last year. Um, you know he's. He's had his ups he's and downs. Enemy, he's, enemy one, he's enemy number one, right? Yes. On Twitter so, for the Guardians. But the minute he struggles, it's like people want to ship him out. I'm like, pitch, you know, like I don't remember last offseason when people were worried about Bieber. I'm like, pitchers work. They're often not even throwing their best stuff in a game. They're working on things. And it's the over the overreaction has killed spring training for me. Twitter and the over, Twitter. I don't disagree with you. Um, but I think isn't that Jeff? Isn't that all season though? When it comes to baseball and Cleveland Twitter, like, and I'm no, you're right. I, I'm not here to battle. <laughs> I'm not. But like, baseball is a conceptually, it's a. I don't want to say it's a hard game to do in forty word clips or whatever you do in Twitter. But <laughs> baseball is not something that you can just take one little gulp of and spit out exactly who and what a team is. And to me, the beauty of baseball, and I'm not going to romanticize it, but there is there is something to it especially to those that really are dedicated and love it. And I think even if I didn't have this job, I've already, I've always loved this game and how this game works. And I feel like, and I want to say this the right way because most people just, you know, I don't in this, cause I'm going to be criticized for it, <laughs> but <laughs> on Twitter, <laughs> but um, it's not football. It's not, you know, it's not the microwave game. Like there's so much to it. Like, here's one of my, like, I, I'm not a big fan of bunning per se. I'm with you. But I'm not a completely against it either. Like, I feel like there's a time and place for it. Uh, and, and, and it bothers me that guys can't all do it because to me, it's like a free throw in basketball. Like, I know it's not sexy, but every once in a while, moving a guy to second and third doesn't hurt you. Now, I'm, I, mean, I don't want you to do it every single time, but circumstances changes how, how you feel about certain things sometimes. And I hate when we're just black and white about the game and about pitchers and hitters. It's a game of failure. And a lot of the times it's a game of inches. Um, so I, I totally get where you're coming from, Jeff. but like I'm to the point now, honestly, I'm very careful what I say on Twitter about baseball and about sports in general, because I just can't have the, <laughs> the, the sixth grade, you know, chats at the lunchroom table over, you know, like over something where it's like, all right, we're not even talking about the same. We're watching the same thing, but we're not even <laughs> describing the same thing. <laughs> Everybody has ruined the conversation at the water cooler. Absolutely. Right. Well, we did see some of the new rules kind of come into play today. It was the first violation. Um, it looks like you guys explained it pretty well in the broadcast. For those who didn't see, uh, James Karinczak was the first guy to, I think he was the first one to get the pitch clock violation, but he asked for a new baseball. It's supposed to reset the clock. It didn't. Um, obviously, those are the guys. Like I didn't realize this either. Emmanuel Class A took as much time between pitches last year as James Karen checked it. That really yeah. surprised me to to learn that. So those are the two guys that are going to stay up the most. So what do you make of those two situations specifically, and uh, however else that goes? It's funny, Justin. We're just coming. I'm just coming back from dinner, and we had conversations. We don't know. I think John Boy may have put something up, which I'm a fan of. I I love that. And that's why I want I want big people like you guys to grow as well. I'm a big fan of what John Boy has done because it he has helped bring I don't agree with everything they say or do, but it's brung young eyes and it shows the narrative that is trying to be said about baseball is that young people don't love baseball, and that's false. There there is a young fan base out there, they just take the game in differently. But on the John, not to get out of place, but on that call, some people, and we're gonna find out tomorrow, the ump may have did the Karen check thing the right way. That because you have to ask at a certain point in time for a new ball. But see, this is where I'm struggling with this. If this is all about safety and regulations of players and a pitcher says the ball's not, you know, they're not comfortable with the ball, are we really still worried about safety, player safety, and endangerment? Um, and, and I know what the, the other rule that Matt's been really good at talking about is that, like, Carlos Santana was one of those guys that would constantly like, kind of open his eyes and, like, he was put, you know, like, like he couldn't see. And that was kind of his stepping out of the box trait. MLB is supposedly going to give you like a timeout as a hitter, or if you want a new baseball, they're going to let you do it a couple times. But if it starts getting marked down that that's your go to move, they're going to stop giving you like they won't do that as well. So I'm curious about the Karen check one today. 
Uh, there was one yesterday in our first game that I'm trying to remember. It may have been a hitter that got in. He was in the box, but he wasn't engaged with his eyes at the pitcher. And it was still eight seconds, nine seconds on the clock. I Look, I feel like if you enjoyed watching the Guardians play last year and the, the style of play, all the clock things will lead us to more of that type of baseball around baseball. I hope and think so. We, uh, this has been awesome already. I just want to reiterate our, our thanks. We have to take our first break here at this point in the show. Uh, we are going to talk about one of our fantastic sponsors here, and then we're going to come back and have more of this great conversation. So make sure to tune in. And listen, if you are a longtime listener to the show, if you've been with me for what is vastly approaching 900 episodes of Lockdown Guardians, then you know one of our Mount Rushmore sponsors is Built Bar. One of our favorite sponsors is Built Bar. And listen, Built Bar is a product I use, I love, I enjoy, but it's also a product that is now expanding. You can now get Built Bar at Walmart and Sam's Club. So you can go check that out in the pharmacy aisle. Uh, and if you're curious about the health benefits of the Built Bar protein bar, know that one bar has 130 calories, four grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. And the ultimate test for me is uh, I take them to school for lunch and occasionally my middle schoolers get hungry and they will eat these. There's not a lot of protein bars a middle schooler will eat. So that tells you that on top of being good for you, they're actually pretty decent to eat. Uh, I think they're the best tasting protein bar I've ever tried. Uh, if you head over to Walmart, you can get the four bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate or coconut puff. If you go to Sam's Club, you can get the 13 flavor box with all of the hit flavors, including brownie, batter and churro. Or you can go to BuiltBar.com, use that promo code LOCK15. So go to BuiltBar.com today. All right. Unlike my partner, Jeff, I do like spring training baseball. Uh, obviously, you guys, this one. I'm going this to, one. <laughs> but you, I mean, you guys both know I'm, I'm a giant nerd. I will watch baseball anywhere, anytime. I don't care. I love the sport. Um, so I was obviously tuned into the first two games quite a bit. I got to ask what's, what's going on down there, Andre, because I saw the clip yesterday. Tom Hamilton had a coat on. Yeah. I see Rick and, and Matt had a coat on. You're out there on the broadcast. No coat. I wasn't trying to be tough. I'm glad you brought that picture up because I want to say something. I wasn't trying to be tough, and I wasn't trying to, like, they had their jackets on. I don't have the same jacket here in Arizona with me that Matt and Rick were wearing. And if I would, I had, like, I, I had a black sweatshirt like this that I ended up wearing all game. But it was like, if I don't, <laughs> it's funny because this, this, these are the things in our business that actually <laughs> people complain about. I knew if I wasn't wearing something that was badly approved, I didn't want my first email of the season to be about that, so I wasn't trying to be tough. <laughs> it was chilly, and as soon as we did the open, I put my jab, put a sweatshirt on. Um, it, it is weird, Justin. The weather here has not been warm yet. Even when they had um, fantasy camp, like fantasy fantasy camp was not that warm towards the end of January. Usually by, and it's still. I mean, it's not March first yet. Usually by mid March, it's much warmer. I'm only here for a couple more days. I pray that when I come back, I won't wear as many sweatshirts as I've worn for the 10 days. I'm like, it has been, Cleveland's been as warm or warmer. Like five of the eight days I've been here. It's amazing. I thought you were just trying to make us all feel better by not wearing that. Cause it did snow last night where I am. So I thought you're just all trying to make us feel better. by nah, not wearing Oh man. There. It was literally today. It was like 56, 60, but there was about a 15 to 20 mile per hour wind. It's been really windy. Um, hopefully it's hotter as we go along, but it's getting us ready for Seattle and Oakland. <laughs> well, at least that, that roof will be closed in Seattle at that point. All right, let me, uh, can I ask Jeff something? Um, you don't like spring training baseball. Do you like world baseball, classic baseball? Ooh, yeah. I'll, uh -oh. I'll tune into some of it cause it's competitive. So just some my, well, here's my thing. So I got, I got two, two kids under five. So I got limited okay. watching time. I understand. And before, before I got this job, I was a, a baseball draft and prospect writer at scouting 24 seven. That was kind of where I got my first big. So I do a lot of college baseball back when I was, I, I live in Milwaukee. Now when I used to live in Ohio, like every Saturday was a Kent. That was, you know, you go, cause that's where the best place to see college ball was. So I, I, when I get that time to watch when we're not recording, I like to throw in a college game. Like, no, not it's, it's, not necessarily a knock on the World Baseball Classic or on. No, you have you have your favorite. No, I you know, I, I got my thing I like, but uh, I sent Tom Hamilton your way. I think he'd rather watch. No, yeah. <laughs> I saw I saw I saw Brad. Uh, I was not there for Nick when I got to okay. for Tom's kids when uh, when they were there. But yeah, 
no, I like it's just spring training. It's it, it's a it's useful. It's good for seeing. I mean, my opinion. This is you know, I'm, I'm just someone who's who does this podcast, not anything, but it's it's great for guys to work things out, to figure things out, to get into shape. But like at the end of the day, or any. I'm curious, like the maybe the listeners can tell me, like, is there anyone out there who's getting upset about a 13 to four score or things like that? I mean, it's it's just about getting to see the guys and knowing they're working through things. I tend to agree with you, to be honest. Like, it's it's for the players, yeah. And if you go into it with the and, and, and neither one of you are wrong. If you go into a spring training baseball game with the right mindset, it's enjoyable. If you're into competition, like I would even go as far as I've asked to scout this, and I'm curious, like. When they have like Arizona fall ball, you know, I, like I know I've never attended, but I'm curious, like, is it competitive enough that you just don't take it as a bunch of all star games that are thrown together? And obviously through a scout side, it's different than me just being a fan. Um, so I get it. Like world baseball, like I've actually I want to say five, five years ago, maybe I went to Jan Gomes home to do like a documentary where he lived. He lived in Knoxville, Tennessee. And I'd never, and like I'd gone to baseball games at Kent, but this was kind of the beginning of Tennessee's program, kind of putting some juice to it. And I got to go under, and, and I will admit, the atmosphere at a Tennessee football game in like mid February was eight times better than the atmosphere at a Cactus League game. But I like competition, so I get it. No, if you go see like Kent Ball State, like that was the one where like, I, I I was always I knew people were gonna be yelling at each other in those stands. Like that was right. always the one you circled. You knew that was gonna be the fun competition. It's not as big as you know the SEC one, but man, they could st- there, there was no love loss. And then right. I couldn't help but smile at Jan Gomes, maybe. I think he's the only person I ever interviewed in the minor leagues where I had to be like, thanks, Jan. Um I, I you've answered the question. You don't have to keep I mean, he was wow. <laughs> quite possibly the nicest person I ever uh met. Oh man. He That's was, awesome. He was, I don't know, like, and he was down there on rehab, but he was always like, I don't know, just when I hear stuff about Jan, I can't help but smile because he was literally like, had no, uh, I'm just some kid down there, you know, interviewing and writing for a place. And he was always, you know, just one of the kindest people. Probably loved you because you didn't look like me or everybody else in Cleveland. (laughs) (laughs) But take advantage of it. Yeah, right. Take advantage (laughs) of it when you can. Trust me. I didn't take, Jan and I had a very good relationship. He's a solid guy. And baseball wise to me he is the beauty of scouting and watching baseball and understanding baseball because really he didn't have a true position until he was in his mid-20s and because he was athletic enough you know most life and he around good teams still want him to be on their team uh, as a catcher it's sandy alomar you know who i trust with catchers um still raves about some of the things about Jan that Jan was able to do that he taught him that really other catchers haven't been able to do that he's taught. Glad you brought that. I, I still want to talk about the World Baseball Classic for a second too, too. but I also want to bring that up. Um, but you bring up a good point with Alomar and, and Gomes and catching. Um, what do you think, what are the conversations that have been had so far about the new rules? I, I know we keep going back to the new rules, but obviously like they brought in Mike Zanino because he's got a great arm and other things like that and I know Tito said the other day about how he didn't realize how good Bo Naylor's arm was, but what kind of conversations are going on down there about the effects of the new rules on the catchers? Because this is already a team that obviously puts defense first in the backstops, but now they had to emphasize, you know, a guy like Zanino and, and Bo Naylor and that, that position. See, that right there is a great question that we should ask Tito tomorrow morning. and <laughs> Because it kind of plays into, and I'm being serious, it plays into why they had to get a veteran backstop this year. Um, Zanino fits that. If Zanino is healthy in the perfect world and I have zero power and I have zero leverage, um, but I think the common eye would say and the common source would say, could Bo Naylor play right now every day? Probably. Would there be some hiccups possibly and could there be some games? I don't want to say won or lost. That's not fair. But the Guardians as an organization are going to do all they can to make the, the transition smooth as possible for a guy like Bo Naylor because they see between age and potential and the jump that he made from how he played in, in 1920 to what, or 21 to 22, rather. Um, they don't want to ruin that. I mean, look at Zanino's career. And I just did this because I just did a sat down interview with him. I want to say Zanino was drafted and in, in the big leagues within a year. And we talked about the kid in. Um, Baltimore last year that went to Oregon State, the catcher. Just catchers in general usually don't get run through the system really quick, right? 
Um, Zanino did in Seattle and was back in the minors before he knew what to do with himself. I mentioned that, that situation because if Zanino can stay healthy and can truly be someone that they, the pitchers can trust, because like Cal threw to him for the first time yesterday, they're not going to rush Bo Naylor. His tra- you know, I think if, with health, Zanino will be there, and they'll use one of these other guys, I would guess, a Cam Gallagher or someone like that who's been around, um, didn't catch a lot in Kansas City, but was a backup for a guy that catches a ton. That doesn't mean I don't think you'll see Bo Naylor this year. I just think from knowing how Sandy is and how particular he is about catching, knowing how Tito is about taking care of a, a, the rotation and how young some of those guys are, I think if they have it their way, Zanino pitch and catches most of the year, and Bo kind of Bo will be here. He carries himself like a big leaguer, but I think he needs another two hundred at bats. Is that fair? <laughs> Maybe not even that. Just don't let our listeners know. I've I've had a similar stance, and it's maybe the number one thing that's gotten me roasted over the coals is the idea that uh, the Bo might. I don't know if you want to say that he needs time or take time, but just that it's a veteran team. They want to roll out with that. Right. If Zanino Shut- doesn't hurt himself, he's like one of the premier left-handed killers in baseball on top of his right. defense. Like he, he, they don't get the contract they get him on without. Help, I can. So. I, yeah. I can either. Uh... I can either text or I can look it up. Sandy Alomar always tells me when I bring this up, he's always like, look at how many games. I He played like six years. Like, he played six, seven years in the minors. And I'll look like – and Sandy's like, it sucked. And he was behind Benito Santiago, if you yeah. guys don't know who that is. Oh, I do. Who was one of, who was one of my yeah. favorite catchers growing up, threw from his no. knees all the Good time. Joe Padres. Yes. Had the, uh, like, those, so Sandy was one of my favorite players as a kid. And he was like, I stayed behind Benito Santiago for like six years. And because of that, like, I was able to come right in and be rookie of the year, and I was able to play 19 years, and I was able to be an all-star. So it's not it's okay at that position not to rush that position. And and people forget Bo Naylor. His his natural position, at least as, a, as an amateur, was not catcher either. He was an infielder. And then he did right. have the year off and then struggled in 21. Yeah. yeah There's no reason to okay, rush him. So He's going to be good. So in that in that vein, then about the World Baseball Classic, we had said this before that it was unlikely he would break camp with the team. I don't think the World Baseball Classic makes it any less likely. But I mean, how do you how do you think they view that in terms of him being gone for however many games it's going to be with him not being yeah. not ca- he'll catch Cal Quantrill and Kate Smith, but he won't catch you know Shane Bieber and and right. Zach Plesac and all those guys. Justin, I think that they don't hold it against him. I want to be careful how I say it, yeah. but. It's not like your center fielder just catching fly balls. You know, it's not like you're a second baseman or short, well, even second and short. You know, if you're the new shortstop, you probably want to be get as many attempts with your second base partner as you can before it counts. It, I, I, it would be foolish for me to say it doesn't matter at all because the position is too important to every, every pitch of the game not to. Um, and at the same time, how do you tell him no? I'll, I'll give more of a kudos to his brother, Josh, who we know wants to play. Mm-hmm. And Josh has looked in the mirror and just realizes that it's not the best thing for him to do yet, as much as he wants to do it. So, and I think, you know what, Bo's smart enough. Bo probably realizes that going away for a week or two weeks doesn't help your chance to win a job. You know what I mean? So I think it's been discussed, but I, I think it has to be discussed that if we're going to make you our everyday catcher starting on, you know, whatever date, and you're going to miss two weeks of catching, you know, four of our starters, and Classe, who's the hardest damn the guy to catch in the world, <laughs> like, and I mean that's that's the true one. And it was t- like you, I would ask catchers last year about, and it was like, you got to catch Classe a few times before you can sit there comfortably and say, let's close a game out with him. Well, I'm sure I mean, there won't be an issue with a guy like Zanino at least because he, I mean, he'll have to, but yeah, he's Zanino's caught some crazy stuff. stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he caught King Fingerlix a prime, right? Yeah. Yeah, oh, that would have been Seattle. Yeah. Yes, you're yes. right. Yes. We're gonna cut him at, at Prime. Uh we, we're gonna take another quick break here. I'm just gonna cut in. Uh and then we will be right back with more of this fun conversation on today's Locked On Guardians. And we are back. Uh you know, you were talking there, and then I just had my complete uh, brain freeze. I, I completely uh, lost right. my point of view. So Justin, why don't you go? I, I just I had one of those we can talk more world, All right, World Baseball Classic. Okay. Justin, who's the team that you're most excited to see? 
I mean, how can anybody not want to see the Dominican Republic, right? That lineup is a beast. There's a lot of fun teams. I'm curious to see like how the Netherlands does. That's like such a unique group too. And not a, not a team. And, uh, who is the team Jazz Chess is playing for? The Bahamas, they're, they're Bahamas. in there. Or who he's playing yeah, for the... Gonna be fun. Yeah. I think Mexico. Look at when you get a Dutch chance, team. look at Mexico's roster. Their roster, like, surprised me with this. I was like, whoa, oh, Like, you know, like, you get taken back a couple times. Like, they they have a couple guys and a couple arms. It, it all comes to arms, right? And, and here, I want to say this. I love the World Baseball Classic. I hate when it's played. Like, how do we fix that? Like, the, the three of us, we can make a lot of money. And, like, I've got players that tell me different things. And all three of us love baseball. And I think we've all agreed amongst the three of us. Some like college. Some don't mind spring training. Some, like, <laughs> how do we make the World Baseball Classic equivalent? Now, see, if I say soccer, everyone will laugh at me. But it's just a, a, a two-week period of time where baseball truly is captivating of the world. Yeah. Is it all-star break and they stop shut down baseball? Is it? the week after the world series in warm cities or is it right now in spring i would i would vote middle of the season just scrap the all-star game for every four years the way they do i mean and jeff hates the all i'm just gonna keep bagging on jeff he hates the all-star game too we're just gonna <laughs> turn the whole so I, love them, I, I, I love the all-star jeff, game too i i loved it as a kid I'm, I'm i'm close to you in age so like as a kid that was the only time i got to see people uh as an adult i'm like yeah like you know now i get to see them all the time like as a kid it was a real special event like that was like legitimately the only time like i get to see tony Gwynn play like and that for was sure. like i wouldn't i wouldn't i would have I would have missed every other Cleveland game for that one because, you know, as, as a kid, uh, you know, of the 80s and then, you know, the early 90s, like you'd, you'd fish sure. a lot of those games to see Tony Gwynn's at bats. But, but uh, I don't know, like, could they do something like the, it's just like how much time to rest do the arm, do pitchers need? Like that, sure. I feel like so much of it comes down to like the pitching, like in like how you feel. It's like, could they do it in December and kind of get some of that attention, take it away? Uh-huh. But then you got like, holiday stuff and makes it it's really yeah football you know, <laughs> no yeah you're right like, no, don't even you're bother like, yeah it's like, you have to line it up when there's no football it's like how right do you... well i kind of and i've had a couple of players a couple of equipment guys say to me they think after the season would be good like literally you know like, and i've like here's like guys are still like ramped up they still would have time if they had injured to to be healthy hopefully by spring training um you still have it's still early in the base pa- I'm sorry, early in the football season. Um, and you still have some attention if you have a good World Series. If you have a good playoff, like last year's playoffs for MLB were pretty decent. Think if they had this World Baseball Classic like like the week after the last World Series game. At least you would have baseball in people's minds. And I'm not trying to sell you guys. I'm just, this is how I, the people that have discussed this with me have brought it up. And for me, like I, at the end of baseball seasons, I'm usually pretty spent. But maybe two more weeks of yeah. But maybe two more <laughs> weeks of baseball I could I could do because the one thing I'll say if you're a baseball fan, I'm all for going to all the big league stadiums if you can. That's one of the you know bucket list because I that, I'm still a kid about going to ballparks and different ballparks. Um, but you gotta if you're really a baseball fan, you gotta go see a game in Dominican or Puerto Rico or. If you can and you can afford it and you have the time and you can find a way because it the vibe is so it's like a party is but in a good way. Um it's it's I remember the first the game we went to in Puerto Rico a few years back. I remember looking at my wife and it was so like festive that I remember her and I laughing because we were actually seeing friends from Cleveland. We saw a friend from college that we hadn't seen in a while. Obviously, we were, you know, it like we didn't fit in, but we did fit in, but it felt like we were at a we were at like a family reunion, is what my wife and I said. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it was a joy to the game that uh, it made me understand why guys from the island kind of play the way they do. Um, so if you're a baseball fan out there, and I'm speaking to both you two as well, if you ever get a chance, go watch, go see a game in winter ball or something like that. It's well worth your time, I, I believe. I will, I'll go watch baseball anywhere. That's You don't have to sell me on that. I will watch <laughs> baseball anywhere. I think you got a great point, too. The last time the World Baseball Classic was around, like, we as Clevelanders should embrace this because you had like different teams, like their fans were bringing in instruments and the, and you know, we had John Adams, you know, RIP John Adams. Like we had people bringing instruments into games. Like that's super fun. And another, another note too, real quick. I wonder before I forget this, Shoy Otani said he's not even the best player on his own team. You're talking about, you know, stacked rosters. That yeah. guy says he's not even the best player on his own team. That's wild. 
Didn't a guy hit a home run off him? Yeah, didn't a guy hit a home run off of him just the other day or something? One of like, like in their BP yeah. or I swear I just saw something with that and I was like, whoa. Yeah. So if he's not the best player on his own World Baseball Classic team, like there, right. that tells you right there, he is the, like the most fun player in baseball right now. So, um, the, okay. So the reason I love spring training, this is what I really wanted to get okay. to too, is, is young players. You know, I love prospects. We both love prospects. Jeff and I, that's where we, we cut our teeth. What, uh, okay. I want to ask about David Fry. People seem to be really interested in David Fry. I've gotten a lot of questions about David Fry. We can talk about other young players, but is there any chance we, we could see him on the roster this season? Cause I said his fate's kind of tied to Bo Naylor because I feel like he's a good third catcher. If you have Naylor DHing and Zanino catching, but I yeah. feel like that's unfair to Fry a little bit, but he's got something. Yeah. I think everything you said has, has something to it. And obviously you don't know injuries or play or how, you know, who will be up or who will be down but i think justin you hit on something sometimes the the way a, a roster comes together your best 26 isn't always your roster right and sometimes i get you in trouble brandon phillips um <laughs> oh man it doesn't because we hurt for that for a long time and there's others i, I shouldn't have took that pot shot but you guys understand what i'm saying no, he's he's the obvious one though he's the one <laughs> yeah, who got, he's no the one who got yeah. away right and it, it hurt um but you make a good point if if nailer's up or if zanino's not hitting or if Zanino gets hurt or if Naylor's hurt or let's say Gallagher let's just say the composition of the, the roster changes Fry brings something and I know he hit the home run in the first game and it seems like that's why we're talking about it if you know Terry Francona and you know the Guardians organization they love to have guys that can play multiple positions I remember when we were in the World Series in 16 I remember like our running joke was that you know Tito's favorite player out of the whole series was Mike Z not Mike Zanino, uh, Zil <laughs> Zobris, because why? Oh, yeah. Because he could play all over the place. Like that was literally one of his favorite players for a couple of years. Because obviously the way he saw it, and you guys know how he manages, he felt like that was like a Swiss blade, you know, army knife. Like you could like okay, I can play him in second, I can play him right, I can play him in left for a couple of innings. So going back to Fry, and I think Fry is smart enough to realize this is you know he's played the corners. Um, but he's caught a little bit, and he's caught enough, and it was partly because of the numbers situation that the Guardians had last season with injuries up at the big league team um, that he got an opportunity to show that he can catch. And obviously the other thing that they love about it is that um, they can put they can let Sandy put his eyes on him and, and, and kind of put his Sandy in. So I place in time where he's on the roster this year. I really could. With or without um, – a promotion or a huge year from Bo Naylor. That's interesting. I, I'm curious to see what happens with him. They're catching last year and the system was just wild. And the depth obviously isn't great up and down the system. So I'm really curious to see how they handle him. Um, any other young players? I, I, you know, how, how I'm curious to see how they're going to handle like Gabriel Arias and Tyler Freeman. They're going to play outfield. I know, but like, how do you work in two guys who are our primary infielders and you have an infielder of, of at least four guys who are going to play every day, but yeah. Hey, these guys can play too. And, and you'd also don't want to sit young players four days a week. Like you would a utility infielder. Who's a veteran. Hey, Amen. Um, I think, and I've said this to Chris Antonetti and I don't think he understood what I meant, but I, I think he did, but didn't want to talk about it at the time. I think this year, organizes throughout the whole organization, right? I think the success and how, People like us yell out and scream about 17 rookies making their debut last year, and it was fabulous. Um, and it's done a great thing. And, and you guys didn't ask, but I think it's done a great vibe. It's, it gives a great vibe to the Guardians organization here in Arizona right now. Because if even if you're on field six right now, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, even if you're on field seven, there is enough history, real history, that's attainable that you can touch of guys that you took BP with last year or a guy that you hit up live BP off of, and then he was in the big leagues last year, that you now have a glut of guys and talented guys, according to everybody that watches, watches the minor leagues. Um, you know, like this isn't just like these are really talented kids and they're all going – if he can make it, I can make it. If I, you know, and I don't want to even say names. So I feel like this is really cool. Like today's game, I know it was a loss, but if you watched it and, and if you are people like you guys, we watched a bunch of guys that are fighting for the same position, kind of have like their own game the last three innings. You know, Martinez, uh, I don't know, has he passed? And if I mess up one of the kids' names from the farm, I apologize. 
Is it Tena or Tena? Tena. Yeah. Um, like this this time last year, Jose Tena was like the cream of the crop, right? Yeah, had yeah. the big he, AFL. Yeah, he, right. Yeah, and he didn't right. play. He won the bag and, title. Right. And he wasn't terrible last season, but he wasn't what yeah, was didn't expected, take a right? Martinez, Angel Angel Martinez kind of tore up everything, and now he's kind of you know, then with yeah. Brian Rocchio still like standing right over in the corner. <laughs> And Rocchio looks bigger. He looks like, and of course, I've seen him since he was 19. And, and I haven't seen, I've seen him in small doses. But obviously, as he, like, I saw this with Andres Jimenez last year. I saw him in 20, you know, his first year, and he was, he was a guy. And then he walked up to me last year in spring training. And like, you could see that, like, he went from a young man to a young, a boy into a man. Like he, and even this year, you can you you shake his hand. He's grown. His body has grown. Um, he's more sure of himself. And I've seen that with Rokio on a different level because what he's only 21, 20, he's still not that old yet. Um, there's a dynamic in this in this whole organization of I want an opportunity like those guys, and I think it's healthy right now. But someone is going to like. There's going to have to be some movement at some point because there are a lot of talented kids that are all playing the same position as positions. I should put an S on it. So I think it's healthy competition. Um, do you guys here? I'll give you a one. And I'll let you I want to say it the right way. Um, do you guys remember like the year that Shane Bieber made his debut? And yeah. Justin, you kind of pay attention to the stuff I do or we do. And one of the funny stories that Tito kind of told that year was that because, you know, when you saw him pitch, everyone was like, man, he's, he's like Kluber Jr. You know, remember that was everybody was – and Tito was like, well, they wouldn't let me see him in a game in spring training. Do you remember, like, Tito saying that? Yes. Yep. Look at the roster right now and look at the two pitchers that they're not letting him see right now. <laughs> Starters. By <Bye, Ben> Williams. <laughs> well – we would see. I would say Tanner <laughs> Bybee. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 it's we Bybee have, and Williams. It's Bybee, yeah. And Bybee and Williams are they're going to be here sooner than later. I <laughs> yeah. we, we were lucky enough to have Bybee on the show in the the winter. Uh, he's he's yeah, he's great. I mean the 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 change that he has made since his college days, and just yeah, I think that's the thing. Like fans, and you know, even a lot of people don't understand is the from like the body mechanics to like we tend to think of sports is sometimes not like smart but like this organization Science. is so incredibly smart like i mean mm -hmm. they get a by they work on mechanics they work on pitching and all of a sudden someone is gay you know he's not the only pitcher who's gaining like five miles an hour after being uh, drafted the kid like from the clevenger trade um uh, cantillo cantillo i watched him the other day man he his show he's like a swimmer shoulders are like like out here and he gave a couple of the big league players some tough at bats the other day is all and and i can tell you uh, Carl Willis was behind was behind it. Tito made sure he stayed out to watch. Like there were big eyes watching Cantillo pitch against the big leaguers, and he threw against like Jose. He threw against Jose Bell, Josh Bell, maybe Rosario. Like it was a fun. It was one of those set up to see like how he because Cantillo's put on too. Yes, and he's put up what? Yeah. He's up to like ninety four, I think ninety five ish. Did he that range? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, this is this is why I actually like spring training baseball and, and in general because it's stuff like this. Like, especially since they cut out, you know, I know it's a little ridiculous to have a forty man roster in September when you don't yeah. play that way, but you've cut out guys making their debuts and getting up there. So in spring training, when you see a guy like Cantillo or Bybee or Angel Martinez or Mike Capriz or David Fry, they get into a game, they do something good, that's the new September call up kind of right. thing. And like you said, big eyes are on them now, and that's why I like that. No, I, and you know what? I would say this to make your fight for spring training to be better or is better. The games are cool, but being able to at 11 a.m. walk around to the backfields and, and see that, like what I just said, that's become my favorite part of spring training. Usually by the time 1 o'clock starts, it's kind of like, all right, let's get these nine innings over with and hope no one gets hurt. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, like I don't want to make yeah. – but I, I live for the live BPs. I live for – I mean, you guys have all seen the story. Jordan Bastion had the picture of, of Bieber and Savali watching Corey Kluber on the backfield. Dude, I got to tell that story to Bybee the other day. And because Bybee and Bieber's story are quite close, you know, West Coast kids, you know, strike throwers, um, you know, and, and then they get to this 
factory and suddenly they can be they, the, the MPH go up a little bit and being a guy that can dot it, they suddenly become high, you know, quick risers. Um, and that's what I find fac- fascinating about just what there's so many contact guys now, right? Like the hitting wise, like they've got a lot of guys. Um, like, did you guys, what did you guys think of Will Brennan at this time last year? Cause I didn't know very much about him at all. <laughs> I'm being honest. I still uh, wondered if they'd let him be like when he was drafted, they announced him as a two way guy. So like, I was still curious oh, yeah. to think like, maybe they would let him pitch again. Like I, my scouting report when he was drafted was like, he might be the perfect two way guy. Cause he might be a loogie and a backup outfielder. Like, you know, that was kind of, you know, my view heading into last year was still like, yeah, he's probably more of a, a depth guy. See, I'm, I'm biased because I saw him a lot in 2021 Lake County. Like that's where he was. So I was right. there and I, I joked, I said, I think I'm higher on Will Brennan than anybody who's not, doesn't have the last name of Brennan. So I, I'm probably the wrong person to ask that question to. But you're right. Do, and that, what do you, all right, here, what would you do with them? I, you can't make him your fourth outfielder, can you? And let him sit around for five days, six days. I'm asking. I'm asking. I don't know. I'm asking. It's, it's so hard. It's, that's, that's like the great, like, and we've had this debate on the show. It's like you want him to keep getting reps because he, he hasn't been in the system like that long. Right. I mean, he has, but, you know, 2020, everyone missed all that yeah. minor league season so it makes it more difficult i and if if you have you know gabby and, and tyler up there it's like it, finding the at bats for all these young guys yeah. it's it's gonna be tough you know it's, it's, put it this way columbus is gonna have a pretty good lineup, yeah and their pitching is yeah. gonna be pretty good and their starting rotation is gonna be pretty darn good too well we hope you enjoyed enjoying that conversation with andre not the guardians dugout reporter among many other things uh don't worry the conversation's not over andre was just so generous with his time and had so much good stuff to say and some of the interesting stories and stayed on this so long that we had to chop up this podcast episode into two episodes. So if you enjoyed today's conversation or today's half the conversation, make sure you are coming back tomorrow to Lockdown Guardians to finish the conversation. We'll have Andre not on again for a good amount of time on the Wednesday edition of Lockdown Guardians. Make sure you are downloading, uh, subscribing, rating, reviewing if you can. Let us know how things are going. Let us know if you like Andre. Let Andre know if you like Andre. We love Andre. Glad to have him on. Um, make sure you tune in tomorrow for part two of this conversation. Thank you for being a part of Lockdown Guardians and go, go, Guardians, go.